1969 was one hell of a year. We went to the moon, had Peace, Love, Woodstock and the first Led Zeppelin album. Death and Destruction through Charles Manson and Altamont, the last ever Beatles concert on the roof of Abbey Road, Concord and the Boeing 747 flew for the first time, and Honda changed motorcycling forever. It's hard for those of us who were still watching Trumpton at the time to understand the impact Honda CB750 must have made. In 1968, the Japanese company was on the verge of becoming the biggest manufacturer in motorcycling. They'd paid their dues, built a reputation for efficient, reliable commuter transport, and won multiple world championships with innovative, multi-cylinder machines that revved beyond 11 and sounded like an angry future. Having won the 500cc world title in 1967 with a four-cylinder bike, Honda withdrew from racing. Two years later, they launched the four-cylinder CB750 Roadster, which in modern terms, would be like launching an unfaired Street Fighter version of Marquez's race bike with a 1,500cc motor and selling it for the same price as a Fireblade. Seriously, what Honda did in 1969 was so far removed from what anyone else was selling it's impossible to comprehend. The CB750 had twice as many cylinders as any motorcycle on sale made 50% more power had a starting procedure that didn't involve kicking or tickling, brakes that worked, reliability that other manufacturers couldn't even dream of, and all for the price of a lashed-up, warmed-over vibrating British nightmare that should have been put out to pasture 10 years earlier. Where other motorcycles had pushrods, the Honda had a chain to drive the single overhead camshaft. Where other bikes used heavy, ineffective brakes needing continual adjustment, Honda used a lightweight and effective disc, and where your mate's BSA needed the points setting every other ride and cam timing every weekend, the CB750 just started every time and ran like a precision-engineered Japanese watch. It didn't vibrate or break down, went around corners as well as anything else out there, and this was the killer, it had four exhaust pipes which was clearly twice as good as having only two, the CB750 quarters should have been as cast iron a classic as a brow superior, Vincent Black Shadow, and BSA Gold Star all rolled into one, but it never really happened for two reasons. Firstly, the pace of progress in motorcycling was getting hotter. Kawasaki launched their three-cylinder two-stroke H1500 not long after which was considerably cheaper, lighter even better looking, and almost as quick. And then there was Easy Rider, a film about two hippie dudes riding across America on the craziest choppers we'd ever seen, getting naked with girls, smoking drugs, and generally, having an even better time than it was possible to have in St. Albans on a knackered BSA A10. The engine sounds great at mid-high revs, the riding position is perfect, and this 49-year-old CB750 was so much easier to ride than an equivalent Triumph, BSA or Harley would have been. Buying one as a classic is tricky. The very early 1969 models are known as having sand cast engine cases, although the process actually used was permanent mold casting which is slightly different. These first bikes are the ones that make the biggest money. But even then you can still buy a tidy sandcast bike for between £20 minus 30k, which is cheap for a bike as significant in motorcycling history as this one. Later 1969 bikes and beyond use die casting, and for anything beyond 1970, the CB750 market is a bit of a wild west. Most of the standard bikes are American imports, some have been restored, but not always recently, and many others are in good original condition, but clearly needing some work. The 1970 chopper craze means there are plenty with aftermarket handlebars, slash cut exhausts and silly seats, and the more recent cafe racer craze means there are plenty more with racing bum stops, clip-on bars and eye-watering price tags. Right now £10,000 will get you a tidy early die-cast CB750. Many are advertised for more and some are worth it because of originality or extensive restoration. In time a good CB750 will become a proper collector's bike, it's too significant not to. How long that takes is anyone's guess, there are certainly bikes out there whose values are rising quicker, and the CB750 market is hard to assess because there are so many tidy examples still out there. 
Our advice would be to buy an early 1970s K model cheap, sort out the niggles take your time getting it how you want it by buying the right parts at the right time at the right price. Enjoy the bike and let your children get a pleasant surprise long after you've gone when they come to sell it and realize that finally, a CB750 is worth the money it always should have been.